for some context, I was 19 years old and had just moved to Agen to start my first year of higher education. It was Sunday towards the end of September 2015, I believe. It was already very dark in the evening, almost pitch black. I was returning after spending a weekend away celebrating a friend's birthday. I had chosen to take a late train in the evening to return to Agen in order to most enjoy the afternoon with my girlfriends. I had just arrived at the station around 9.50pm and I still had to walk about 30 minutes to get home. Being relatively new to the area, it was the first time I'd ever crossed the town in the middle of the night. But in my entire life, I had never had a problem before, so I was neither worried nor afraid to walk home alone, not even in the middle of the night. Anyway, on to the story itself. As I left the station, I saw a small group of men smoking in front of it. I didn't really pay much attention to them. I put in my headphones, put on my music, and started moving toward my home. The only route I knew to get home at that time was basically a long straight line, then turn left at a park and another long straight line. Extremely simple. I was still in the first straight, head in the clouds. The lighting was still good in this area, but I could see that a bit further up it started to dissipate into nothing. I hadn't planned for this, but at the moment it wasn't a problem for me. Then, though, is when I noticed that someone was seemingly walking behind me. He was wearing a dark gray sweater with the hood completely over his head. Well, this guy was probably just going home, too. Fifteen minutes later into the walk, though, this guy was still right behind me. The lighting had gradually faded, and I started to feel that something was wrong here. The stress started to build up inside me. I tried to ignore it and stupidly started turning up the volume on my phone to focus on the music I was listening to and try not to pay attention to this person. Near the turn I was supposed to make, the lighting was basically non-existent. I was starting to get really anxious because the guy was still walking behind me. I started to speed up even faster. I had the choice of either crossing the park or going around it. Thinking the worst, I told myself I had better stay on the sidewalk to walk past all the houses in the city center, just in case there would have been people nearby to hear or see something in the worst situation. Out of fear for my safety, I decided to bypass this park. He decided to cut through the park, which gave him a little distance on me. Despite the darkness, I could see his silhouette in the park. I could see him turning around every few seconds to note where I was. I walked even faster to gain more distance. The more I saw him advance, the more I had the feeling he was going to end up cutting me off at the exit of the park. I managed to get some distance on him when my speed increased though. I was very scared. There was now no light at all. It was extremely dark. I didn't dare to run or turn around. I was afraid he would really start chasing me then, and he would easily catch up with me. I was afraid to see how far away he was, and for him to see my fear. I wanted to remain discreet, but the anxiety was so strong I started to cry. I did everything I could not to make any noise though, so at least he wouldn't hear that I was crying. The idea of him seeing this vulnerability scared me even more. I was afraid it would excite him or give him more power and strength, and that would paralyze me even more. It was a long five minutes as he followed me, both of us completely in the dark. The more I walked, the more I began to realize we were both going in the direction of my house. I had to think about where to go, but there was no other way I knew. The next crossroads was still far away, too. The ball in my stomach was getting heavier and heavier. I was starting to have quite a stitch in my side as well. Arriving at the crossroads, I crossed without even looking to see if cars were coming. I just went for it. The street up ahead was a little brighter, but it was still very quiet. No people, no cars. I wanted to go into a random apartment or house, any one, and pretend it was my home. Maybe I could ask for some help. At the end of the intersection, I saw another man, in his 40s or so. He was making big gestures for me to stop. I was so afraid I tried to ignore him. I thought maybe they were together. 
As I passed him though, he started walking alongside me and continued to gesture to me. As I looked closer, I saw he was gesturing for me to take my earbuds out, so that's what I did. The gentleman in his 40s then said to me, Miss, I passed you with my wife and son further down. There's been a man following you since earlier. I followed you to make sure that everything would be fine, but I saw him start running after you, so I started running too to warn you. Come on, this side of the sidewalk. I'll walk with you. Don't worry. I immediately saw that he was somewhat afraid too. Without asking myself any questions, I walked very close to him and broke down in tears. He tried to reassure me, but I just couldn't calm down. I was shaking all over. Now that this gentleman was beside me, the man who had been following me the whole time who was still there, watched us and then decided to leave. It was the first time I'd seen him so clearly. The gentleman who joined me explained that he had a tobacco shop in the street opposite the station and they were just closing when I passed by. When he saw this suspicious guy, he became convinced the man was following me and meant to harm me. We sat on the sidewalk together for almost 30 minutes while I came to my senses. Then he even kindly walked me home. I guess the gentleman had thought that I hadn't noticed the guy was following me. He told me later that in the part where it got completely dark, the man had started running and was actually really close to me. The gentleman started shouting at him, and the guy following me suddenly slowed down. He was certainly going to do something, but knowing the gentleman was nearby dissuaded him from trying. For my part, I was in front and much too scared to turn around, so I hadn't noticed any of that. I remained convinced that gentleman saved my life that night. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa, and I thought I could share something that happened to me. In November of 2021, it was my best friend's 20th birthday. She decided to have a party, but since she lives in an apartment with her mother, she rented out a house in the countryside, about 40 minutes by highway from our big city. She set up everything on her own. The long-awaited day finally arrived, and as usual, she was extremely late. We decided to go and collect the keys with her mother, and a friend of my friend would come and pick her up later. Despite some difficulties, we managed to find the house, which was actually really lost in between a bunch of overgrowth, especially since it was foggy and super cold. We met the owner who gave us the keys and showed us around. The house was super huge. On the ground floor, the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, and the entrance, with the staircase which went up to where there were three other bedrooms and another bathroom. I decided to put my things in the bedroom on the ground floor. The owner explained to us that she'd lived in the house with her family before, and they had a newer house not far from this one. We wondered what my BFF was doing. They were quite late now. We were just starting to set up the decor and everything. Eventually, the two arrived, and my friend told us that all the other guests had either cancelled or were refusing to respond. That meant there were just the three of us, with me who was particularly tired already because of health problems. My BFF's mother was leaving too. We got together, some music, alcohol, chips, etc. I was starting to have a really bad headache though. I told myself that shit must be going down in my head, so we decided to open the window at the end of the room we were in. You know, get some fresh air going. Time passed by and we started to get a bit hungry. The two of us had spotted a KFC near the highway exit, about 20 minutes away. We decided to have that and order someone to come deliver it here, except we realized that no delivery service would come to our area. I was not feeling very well, so I was staying home and going to rest a little, and they were going to go out and get the food. Before settling down, I wanted to take off my makeup and change. I took all my clothes to the bedroom on the ground floor. I got my friend's makeup remover in one of the rooms upstairs. I took off my makeup in the upstairs bathroom. All of a sudden though, I began to hear noises from downstairs. Maybe it was my friends, perhaps they'd forgotten something down there. I called out their names but there was no answer. I told myself in my head, come on girl, you're being paranoid, it's an old house. 
I go back downstairs and decide to quickly tidy up the living room so it will be clean when they get back. I had a cold shiver and I realized the window was still open. I got closer to close it, only to see the latch that was supposed to keep it closed was gone. That was a huge discomfort. I felt a little inner panic. I tried to reassure myself again. Things aren't going well in your life, you're tired, shit must be making you hallucinate or become paranoid or something. I closed it. Despite myself, I still had this indescribable feeling. I couldn't figure out what it was though, so I tried to act as if nothing was happening. I hummed music in the living room and went to the kitchen to grab a knife. You never know, still. I tried to send a message to my friends, but I saw my message had not been sent because there was no network signal. I tried via Snap, Insta, everything. Nothing would go through. I was on edge now. At this point, I decided I was going to explore the house and pretend I was taking snapshots of it to my friends so it didn't seem suspicious. To this day, I don't know why that thought came to me. I did the whole house though, and didn't find anything. I told myself detective series I'd been watching must have really rubbed off on me or something. I put the knife back in the kitchen and decided to go relax. I laughed at myself a bit. I did see that things were quite a mess around here, but that was probably just us messing everything up earlier. I decided to clean up a bit. I saw my deodorant, so I put it on as well. After that, I put it on the floor next to my bed. I didn't feel like bringing it back to the bathroom, and there was no bedside table. I turned off the light and put my phone down as well. I was so tired. I closed my eyes and tried to fall asleep. I had that ultra-calm long breathing like when you're asleep, except I couldn't seem to sleep at all. Not very long later, I began to hear little noises from under the bed as well, as if someone was tapping on the box spring to see if I'd react or not. I was paralyzed with fear. I didn't know what to do. It was almost like dissociation for me. My mind was so terrified my body started doing things all on its own. It seems stupid, but I don't know how to explain it otherwise. It's like I didn't tell my body to do anything. It just did stuff all on its own. I heard these intense rubbing noises. It sounded like something was coming out from underneath the bed. I felt a presence right next to me, but I couldn't do anything. I was about to vomit because I was so scared. I wanted to cry, but my body remained stoic and didn't move an inch. In this moment... It seemed like an eternity to me. I could feel something moving. I felt the mattress lower on the side, as if someone were putting their knee down on it. Whoever this was got closer to me. In my head, I said to myself, This is it. It's over. I wanted to scream. From who knows where, while the man got closer and closer, creeping over me. My hand suddenly grabbed the deodorant from the floor. It's crazy. It was almost like a split-second instinct. My hand had the deodorant in tow, but the rest of my body was frozen. It felt like I was suffocating. The man got closer, to the point I could feel his hot breath on my neck. It was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. I don't know how this all happened, but in a handful of seconds, somehow I managed to shove the deodorant into his eyes. The man screamed and stepped back, and I continued to spray the spray-on deodorant into his face. Two seconds later, I was running down the hall and locking myself in the bathroom with the crappy tiny latch. He began banging on the door, shouting as he tried to break the lock. I don't know what to say except it's as if I had two memories, the memory of my brain and the memory of my body. My mind wanted to scream with all its might, call for help, to cry and hide, but my body continued to move by itself. I opened a small window of the bathroom and tried to climb outside. I started running with all my strength through the vineyards once I'd made it through, through the dark and the fog. I remember thinking to myself, this is almost like an old horror movie where they run out through the cornfield. I could hear the man chasing far behind me, but I didn't dare to turn around. I ran and ran and ran without stopping. I didn't even think about taking my phone with me. I just ran. I arrived at a house with no lights on. I wanted to call for help, but nothing would come out. I began searching around for a place to hide, 
I knew I wouldn't be able to run for 50 years trying to outpace the guy, and I knew he was not far away. I had to hurry. I saw some sort of old compost bin, so I opened it and jumped inside. I tried to calm my breathing. I could hear the man coming. I told myself that my friends would surely arrive soon. I tried to remember all the information I could. The name of the town, my name, the guy's height, the guy's weight, what he was wearing, what happened. I could hear his footsteps nearby. I decided to try and not make any noise. What followed was the longest several minutes of my life. Fortunately, not long later, I heard sirens coming down the street. Then the guy screamed. Even today, I remember exactly the intonation of his cries. I continued to not make any noises. I didn't know what was going on outside. I could hear his shouting and yelling, a scuffle even. I told myself it was not over yet. I couldn't be sure it was over until the cops got me. I could hear even more screaming, then footsteps coming closer to me. Now I heard people calling out my name. I couldn't move. Someone opened the door above me. It was a cop telling me it was going to be okay. Nothing came out of my mouth. I couldn't cry or say a word. It was only when my BFF came and hugged me that everything settled down. I collapsed on the ground and cried my eyes out. It was horrible. The police were able to take my testimony the next day at the hospital then gave me the story of what actually happened. Apparently, this guy was watching the house the whole time. He saw my friends all leave, so he decided to take his chance. He entered the house via the living room window. Then he went into the downstairs bathroom and stole my underwear. He masturbated on it and then climbed under the bed. He admitted that his basic goal was to re me. After I ran away, he was so angry that he wanted to kill me as well. We learned the guy in question was the son of the owner. He knew the house well since he had lived there, and he knew there were a bunch of 20-year-old girls there. He had already been convicted of a civil assault on a minor and received a suspended sentence for another rape he had committed. Today, I'm feeling far better. I share this story as a part of my therapy, also to raise awareness about following your instincts. Also, to express my frustration at the fact that this man was already well known to the police. I'm not calling into question the police that worked on my case though, just the systematic problem as a whole. I'm lucky to still be alive. Now I'm hyper vigilant all the time. I can hear the screams regularly in the nights when I'm asleep, and I can no longer tolerate kisses on my neck or feeling someone's breath upon me, whereas I loved it before. It's a very serious thing. My name is Elena. I'm 28 years old and I live in Belgium. At the time of this incident, I was 18 years old. A friend had invited me to a party. I didn't really want to go because I didn't know anyone except for her and it was an entire hour's drive away from my home. In the end, though, I ended up going anyway. The evening actually went pretty great. We had a lot of fun, and I stayed sober because I had to drive home later. My friend, though, was completely smashed out drunk. After making sure that her roommate would bring her home safely, I finally got to go home around 4 a.m. I got back into my car all alone. It was an old 98 car that I had bought with my student job salary. The evening had taken place at a distillery in a small country road not lit at all. I was parked quite far away as well. I was already not too reassured as I walked toward my car. I quickened my pace even further though once I heard leaves crunching behind me. I arrived at my car and went to open the door with the key since it was an old car, only to realize it was no longer locked. I had for sure locked it on the way out to the party but at least nothing had been stolen. I sat down and turned to the right to put my bag on the passenger seat, only to see out of the corner of my eye, legs in the back seat. I turned around and discovered someone back there. A girl, just lying in my back seat. Terrified, I began to yell at her, asking what the hell she was doing hiding in my car. She jumped up and started to cry. She apologized and explained to me she'd come here alone by train to join her friends at this party. She had been drinking so much though 
that she missed the last train home and she didn't know how to get back by herself. She walked over to the first open car and decided to sleep it out there. I was a little angry, but I felt bad for shouting at her. It really felt like she was in some real distress. I told myself she was just a lonely girl who wanted to go home, like me in the end. I felt really sorry for her, so I offered to take her home. I asked her where she lived, and she told me the name of a town right next to mine. I told her I would take her back, since it was not very far away from my house. I then invited her to come and sit up front for the ride. I set off, and so as to not leave any awkward blank space, I tried to make a little small talk with her. Gradually, though, as we talked more, our story started to contradict itself, and I didn't feel comfortable anymore. We were still driving on this dark country road, but we'd come to a part that was well lit. While driving in the lights, I noticed that this person's legs were really hairy and very bulky as well, almost like a man's legs. Then I looked down at their hands and saw that they were those of a man as well. In that moment, I understood. This was a man disguised as a woman, and I hadn't noticed in the darkness. My blood ran cold. I didn't know what to do, so I followed my instinct. I told myself if I started to panic and just yelled at him, you're a guy or something, he would become aggressive, and that's the last thing I wanted. I was all alone in the middle of the countryside, far from home, with a guy pretending to be a woman. I had no idea why either. I followed my instincts and decided to fake a small accident so neither of us would get hurt, but I still had an excuse to call the police. I drove us into a small ditch. We got out of the car and I pretended to be in shock that I'd lost control of the car. I said I was going to call the police now because the car was damaged. He told me there was no need. He would call someone who didn't live far away and would come by and help us. I dialed the police anyway though. Thank God they answered me directly. When he saw I was now talking to the police, he just ran away into the middle of nowhere. Now I was alone with my car wrecked. I was terrified. I burst into tears and explained everything to the policewoman on the line. She told me a team was not very far away and they would arrive soon. A good five minutes later, the police arrived. I was hiding behind my car, completely afraid the man would re-emerge from where I'd seen him running away into the darkness. I explained everything to them, describing the appearance of the man in question while they searched my vehicle. They opened the trunk while I was talking to an officer, and then my face fell. There was a shovel as well as a bunch of items to tie someone up in there. Obviously, I'd not had those in my trunk before. The sick man had planned to bury me in the middle of nowhere. The police took me home and explained to me I was very lucky. I never knew who the man was, and I never saw him again either. Clearly, though, that evening I escaped death. I asked myself 1,001 questions. He gave me the name of a small town next to mine. So how did he know where I lived? He got into my car, a single girl's car. How did he know it was that, though? Had he been following me the whole time? When he said he was going to call someone, did he have an accomplice? Since he ran off into the middle of nowhere, why didn't the police ever find him? Even today, ten years later, I still have anxiety just thinking about it. I have a phobia of going home alone, and I never let my friends go home alone either. I'm traumatized for life now.